Hello, 2012 Rocky Mountain Senior Game athletes. Are you having a great night? Are you having a fantastic event that one of these wonderful people in the city have put on for us, huh? That's fantastic. So I, I want to uh, thank everyone for having me here tonight. Um, what I'll be talking about tonight, I, I titled my talk, uh, The Heart of the Athlete. And I'll be telling you a little bit about what's sharing with you some of my thoughts on what, uh, what it means to be an athlete. Meredith. So just, uh, just, a, uh, just a little bit, bit of background uh, on myself. When I was, uh, when I was uh, at the ripe young age of 46, I was, uh, I was an athlete. Uh, I still am an athlete, but I was wondering, you know, I started to suffer some challenges, you know, so little injuries here and there, starting to wonder, how am I going to keep this up for a long time? And so what I did is I decided to interview 50 athletes over the age of 50 from all across the country and actually some outside of the country just to try to understand what, what do I need to do to be successful and remain an athlete for as long as possible. So I interviewed, interviewed these 50 athletes over 50. It was a life-changing experience for me. And, uh, and I wrote a book about it, Meredith. So uh, as was mentioned, I wrote this book, 50 Athletes Over 50. How many people have heard of 50 Athletes Over 50? Okay, I need to talk to my publicist about this one. <laughs> All right, now you heard about it. So maybe next year there'll, there'll be more. So uh, I, don't wanna, I didn't come here to talk about my book. I didn't come here to talk about myself. I came here to talk about athletes. So Meredith, let's talk about uh, the heart of the athlete. So don't you make decisions, this just make you want to do this, right? Right? Don't you just want to do that? I have this on my cell phone. It's my cell phone ringer. And when it goes off, I jump around the house and my wife looks at me like, not again. Don't call this guy. OK, go ahead. So what the heck is it about that song that makes me jump around my kitchen and makes us feel like we do? So I'm going to explore a little bit about my thoughts on what it means to be an athlete. Well, first of all, athletes know how to dream. We know how to dream. Uh, this is someone from my, for, that I interviewed for my book. Her name is Maria Raquette. She was a, a very good master cyclist in her late 40s. Uh, she, was, uh, very, she won just about every race in Florida, and she was nationally ranked. Well, she went out for a ride one day with a pack of cyclists, and a motorist ran into the whole pack. And so she happened to take the brunt of it. She was in a coma for quite some time, was hospitalized for months, broke her tibia in 30 places. Okay, so Maria was there in the hospital, and the doctors told her that she would never work out with her legs again. So she realized that she, bicycling was probably going to be out of the question. So the thing that she loved to do was going to be out of the question. But she remembered raising her two young sons that she remembers watching this show on television about these people who lifted weights and did workouts and did this bodybuilding. So she thought, well, maybe that's something that I can do. So when she got out of the hospital, she walked down to the closest gym and said, I, you know, I'd like to learn how to get stronger and to learn how to lift weights. So she did that. She got stronger. And Meredith, two years later, she entered in and got second place in her first bodybuilding competition. Did Maria know how to dream? Yes. You betcha Maria knows how to dream. OK, so next. So here's a, here's a saying that I, that I really, really like from Mickey Mantle. Uh, somebody once asked him, asked me if I ever went up to the plate trying to hit a home run. He said, sure, every time. OK, so how many people in this room have a dream? Okay. How many people have a dream to have a medal at this event? OK, that's awesome. So athletes, we know how to dream. OK, next. We also know that. Without challenge, growth is absent, right? Unless we challenge ourselves, we don't grow. OK, and this is another gentleman that happened to be in my book. This is a, a client in the Shawan Gunks in New York. So next. So this is a, a quote that I love about growth from Napoleon Hill, who uh, who's, was a writer, wrote some business books back in the 60s, I believe. Strength and growth come, out, come only through continuous effort and struggle. OK, next. We know that training pays, OK? Athletes know that when you set a goal, 
and you do the things that you need to do to reach that goal, things happen. Right? Training pays off. And except for when you read these uh, things in the media and on TV where you, these professional athletes have bad behavior and they, they lose their fortunes, I have to say that most athletes I know, this doesn't just apply to athletics. I mean, often it applies to all aspects of their life. Most athletes that I know are successful not just in athletics, but in all parts of their life, in their career, in their families. Okay, it's because they know you set a goal, you train, it pays. Okay, next. We're also not afraid to work hard, right? We're not, we're not afraid to work hard. So, so we know the challenge makes us grow. We know that if we set a goal and we train at it, it pays, and we're not afraid to work hard. Okay, who in here is not afraid to work hard? Who loves to work hard? I love to work hard, don't you? Nothing better. Okay, next. Okay, here's a, here's a wonderful quote from Arthur Lydiard, who was a, a running coach uh, in the last century. Um, it's just a matter of understanding what's necessary and disciplining yourself to do it, right? It's, it's very simple for athletes, and I have to say this is not necessarily true for everyone on the planet who's not an athlete. Um, I think athletes think a little bit differently. Okay, next. We also know that with winning comes a responsibility. When you win, you have the responsibility to be a role model. You have the responsibility to treat the people who didn't win with respect and win graciously. So with winning, there comes a responsibility. And I think athletes know this. This is Loretta Claiborne, who's a Special Olympian. Um, I interviewed for my 50, 50 Athletes Over 50 book. She, uh, she's become a, a diplomat or a representative for uh, Special Olympics. She's traveled all over the world. She's a multi-medal athlete in Special Olympics. And this is her receiving an uh, ESPY award, which are awards given by, basically by ESPN for athletes who do great things for the community and for the world. So with winning comes responsibility. So here's uh, a great quote that's uh, appropriate from Winston Churchill, that the price of greatness is responsibility. So how many of us in the audience know that when you win, there is a certain responsibility associated with that? Okay, yes. Okay, so athletes recognize that. Next. We see losing as an opportunity. Okay, we like to win, right? Like to win, who doesn't like to win? We realize we can't win all the time, and actually the growth doesn't happen when you win. What would it be like if you won all the time? You're like, ah, I won. Yeah. The gold is in the losing, right? The gold is in the challenge. The gold is in that, in that growth that comes from losing. So not that we don't like to win all the time, but I think athletes view losing a little bit differently. I think we view it as a growth opportunity. Next. This is a wonderful quote uh, from Michael Jordan, who I, I think most of us would agree was a, is pretty successful. He says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to make the game-winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life. And this is why I succeed. So athletes know this. Next. We, we know how to cheer for others. Right? We, we celebrate our own wins, but we celebrate the wins of others. I'll be out on the track today. There's a lot of hooting and hollering for a lot of people today. I can almost guarantee it. So we know how to cheer for others. And this is Maria uh, Riquette, who I showed earlier, cheering up some, some other person, another unfortunate person who had just had an accident and was uh, kind of recovering with her. Um, she was actually in much worse shape than him, and uh, she found a way to try to cheer him up. So athletes know how to cheer for one another. So a uh, quote from Nelson Mandela, it's better to lead from behind and put others in front, especially when you celebrate victory when nice things occur. You take the front line when there's danger, then people will appreciate your leadership. And I have to say that uh, a lot of athletes I know have an element of leadership about them because of a lot of these same characteristics. We hate to quit. Athletes hate to quit. I hate to quit. This is a gentleman who I interviewed for my book. His name is Sandy Scott. 
When I interviewed Sandy, he was 69 years old, now he's 72, and he lives in Florida, and he uh, he's pretty much cleans up in the, in the Florida cycling area. He'll go to uh, masters, master's races, and he'll have the fastest time of the day for people over 50. And um, he's a fierce, fierce, fierce competitor. He's, he's one of these guys that he spits nails. You know, he's really, really a tough guy. And he, I remember telling, him telling me that one of, one of the keys to his success is that he, he hates quitting. He hates giving up. And you never, 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 never quit. He says, victory goes to the person who hangs on for just one more second. So, next. So, a quote from Lance Armstrong, pain is temporary, quitting is forever. Who hates to quit? I hate, I hate to quit. I not only hate to quit in athletics, I hate to quit in anything. Okay, next, Meredith. And this is especially true uh, as we get older as athletes that, you know, it's not really about the medals. It's not really about winning. You know, it's not really about that glory. A lot of it's about the journey. A lot of it's about what we learn through trying ourselves and testing ourselves as athletes. It's what we can prove to ourselves as possible of ourselves. This is Linda Quirk, who I also interviewed for my book. Uh, Linda didn't start running until she was 35 years old. Her, her brother said, hey, what do you say you run a marathon with me? And she said, sure. She didn't know it was 26 miles. But she said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. So uh, she so roped her into doing this marathon. So the next year, she ran, completed her first marathon, got hooked on it. Uh, was uh, kind of a nut about runner for many years um, until tragedy bestruck her family. Her stepdaughter was addicted to methamphetamine and her and her husband lost her to the streets. She was living on the streets. And so that was a big tragedy for the family and Linda vowed to herself that if and when they got through that, that she would devote herself to helping other people get help. Because she was kind of, her daughter was kind of lucky that they had means to help help her daughter. So when they finally got her daughter back in the house, and, and they did, um, after a few years, she started raising money for a foundation that helps people who can't afford to get recovery, get recovery. So this is a picture of Linda, who in 2010 ran across four of the world's largest deserts, raising money for a foundation to help people. So this is her, I, I think she's in, uh, in the Sahara. So we know it's about the journey. Next. And this is a wonderful quote I love from Muhammad Ali. A man who views the world the same at 50 as he did in his 20s wasted 30 years of his life. <laughs> and how true is that? How many people feel that's absolutely true, right? Who looks at the world the same gosh darn way? Okay, next. Another thing is, you know, we train, we prepare, um, you know we, know, we know how to do all that. We also know when it's go time. We know when it's time to, for us to be on the line, okay, like many were this past couple days, or will be in the next couple days. We know when it's time to put ourselves to the test. So we know when it's go time. And Meredith? So is it your go time? Is it your go time? Next, Meredith? This is your go time. This is your go time, okay? So, so I want everybody, everybody to tell me, say, it's my time. My time. One more time. It's my time. It's my time. Turn to the person on to the right of you. Say, it's your time. It's my time. Turn to the person to, to the left of you. It's, it's your time. It's All right, well, thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it talking to you. Best of luck for everyone's competing. Congratulations to all of you who have been here competing the last few days. Thank you much.